So today we have a pretty exciting product to unbox from ASUS. This is the P8Z68V Pro, or if you prefer, P8Z68V Pro. Personally, I don't care. I'll say whatever sort of works with the sentence. Uh, as many of you have noticed and commented one way or the other, if I say Z, there's Z zealots running after me to tell me that it's wrong and this vice versa. Anyway, this board features digital power design as well as their uh, TPU and EPU dual intelligent processors. So these are for energy savings and performance. All right, we've got full support for Intel's latest Core i5, i3, and i7 processors on the LGA 1155 socket. This uses the Z68 chipset. So what that means is that besides supporting those technologies, besides supporting SLI and Crossfire and all those performance features, we also also have support for Intel Smart Response SRT technology, which means that you can use a small SSD, 60 gigs or smaller, to boost the performance of your boot hard drive. And we also have the Lucid Virtue technology, which allows you to use the onboard video that's built into your Core i3, i5, or i7 CPU to accelerate certain key things like video encoding while normally using your dedicated graphics card for gaming. Pretty sweet. All right, we got USB 3, a UEFI BIOS. We have hmm, BT Go, Bluetooth enjoyment. Maybe we'll have to find out what that is. GPU boost for, uh, for increasing the performance of the onboard graphics, as well as their precise DigiPlus VRM. Let's have a look at the back. Digital power design, the new standard. Basically, it's better, okay. We have the ultimate turbo processor, so that's the TPU, the EPU for energy efficiency, as I mentioned before. Oh, here we go. Diverse Bluetooth enjoyment. Oh, it means onboard Bluetooth. Okay. UEFI BIOS. Okay. Yep. That's pretty much it. Let's uh, get this open. Oh, I have never seen, well, at least not in a long time. No, I don't think I've ever seen an ASUS board um, that comes in a box like this where the board is on top of the package with the accessories underneath. You know what then? We're going to do something crazy and we're going to look at the board first and then the accessories because ASUS has gone and turned my world upside down with their packaging change here. So here we go. Here's the motherboard itself. Let's start with the CPU socket where we normally start. You don't have to move around so much, just kind of top down is okay. CPU socket. So there's your LGA 1155 socket, which as I mentioned before, features support for the latest i3, i5, and i7 processors on the LGA 1155 socket. You are surrounded by your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, Hmm, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hmm, I don't know how many phases that power design is because I count 16, but it could be like a 14 plus two or something like that. So someone leave a comment on the video as well. How many phases of power in the Digi Plus VRM on the P8Z68V Pro? We have support for a dual channel DDR3 memory. And that is pretty typical for an 1155 board because that's all the 1155 onboard CPU uh, DDR3 memory controller actually supports. All right, on the side here, we have the EPU and TPU switches. If you do want to use those technologies, we also have the MEMO K button. So what the MEMO K button allows you to do is take out of JDEC spec RAM modules and boot them up using a safe setting, but then you can get into the BIOS and set them to whatever higher performance settings you desire. Our 24 pin and our eight pin connectors are in their ideal locations along the right hand edge of the board and at the top left respectively. And moving down, we have a USB three front panel header. So that will have support for all the latest cases with USB three that do use a pin out rather than a pass through from a normal port like this. Okay, so we've also got SATA ports galore. So we have four SATA to three gigabit per second and four SATA three six gigabit per second. Now these two right here are coming off the Intel controller and these two are coming off of a third party controller. So if you did want to run like a six drive RAID array, you would want to use these six. So these are more like your auxiliary ones. All right, we've got a chipset cooler here using a similar kind of wave looking design to many of ASUS's recent motherboards. We have two FireWire ports. There's our front panel headers, three USB 2.0 ports, built-in switches. I'm a big fan of these because I often use boards on a test bench. This makes my life easier. Reset and power are both included. Front audio is right here. And let's have a look at the PCI slot layout on this particular board. We've got seven slots. I love seeing seven slots on an ATX form factor 
your board. You want to know why? Because that's the most you can have and I always like having the option to install more stuff rather than not having the option to install more stuff. Okay, so we have three PCIe 16X slots right here, the dark blue, the white one, and the black one. Uh, these two, it looks this one's wired for 16, this guy's wired for eight, and this guy's wired for eight, although I'm gonna have to double check what bandwidth these actually run at. We've got two PCI slots, two PCIe 1X slots, and on the back we've got a pretty normal looking array of connectors. We have four USB, six USB 2.0 ports, our little Bluetooth guy right here. We have uh, optical audio out, HDMI, DVI, and VGA out, which are supported on all second generation Core i7 processors, unlike the first generations where it was only supported on dual cores. Do we have two USB 3.0 ports, Intel Ethernet, rather than a third party, such as a Realtek Ethernet solution, and 7.1 audio. So now let's look at the accessories for anyone who actually cares about that. Okay, one accessory we've got, this is neat, is a USB header to dual port PCI bracket for the back. So if you can, if you don't have front USB 3, you can add a couple more ports to the back at the very least. We have two US, uh, two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second cables, two USB 3 gigabit per second cables, although they're identical other than the white color on the 6 gigabit per second ones, and they're all right angle. We have an SLI bridge, we have Q connectors, which are the easy connectors for the front panel headers, an IO shield, a user guide, a drivers and utilities DVD, don't use it, download the latest from the ASUS website, as well as a SATA mode notice. Interesting. Okay, how to turn on HCI mode which is good. HCI mode is better than IDE mode for more performance and whatnot. Uh, give me just a second here, guys. So I looked up the PCIe slots and I thought maybe because this one is wired for 8X, they have some kind of uh, splitter chip on here of some sort, but they do not. So it's 16X, 8X, 8X, or 8X, 8X, 4X, just as with most P67 boards. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.